Come to identities using double angle formulas. We're going to verify the following identities. So for this one, um, you can really start with either side, but I'm going to start with the left hand side just because I see that there's a two alpha in the numerator and I can use my um, double angle identity for sine. So that's kind of jumping out at me. So we'll start with the left hand side. So we have sine squared 2 alpha over sine squared alpha. So what I'm going to do is in the numerator replace sine of 2 alpha with 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. And then remember that whole quantity gets squared over sine squared alpha. So I've just replaced this numerator with the appropriate double angle formula. And don't forget to square it. Okay, from here, I'm going to distribute that exponent to all the terms in the numerator, right? So I have to square the 2, the sine alpha, and the cosine alpha. So I'm going to have 4 sine squared alpha cosine squared alpha over sine squared alpha. And then hopefully something's jumping out at you, right? We can cancel out that sine squared alpha. So I just have 4 cosine squared alpha. Now take a peek at where we're trying to end up. So I have 4 minus 4 sine squared alpha. That means instead of cosine squared, I want everything to be in terms of sine squared. So now's a good time. I'm going to use my Pythagorean identity and replace cosine squared alpha with 1 minus sine squared alpha. And then we're home free. I'm just going to distribute the 4. So I have 4 minus 4 sine squared alpha, and that's my right-hand side. Woohoo! Yay. Okay. Nice work. Next example, B. Sine 4x equals 4 sine x cosine x times 1 minus sine squared x. Honestly, the right-hand side looks messier, and that's typically what I like to start with. So let's start with the right-hand side in this case, switching it up. So we have 4 sine x cosine x times 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Notice I'm writing sine x cosine x. I'm not just writing sine cos, okay? Especially with these double angles. If you don't, it's a big problem, big no-no. All right, so there's a few things we can do. First of all, I can rewrite this as 2 times 2 sine x cosine x, right? Isn't that 4 sine x cosine x? Times, and then 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Does that look familiar, people? That is cosine of 2x. And then notice here, 2 sine x cosine x, that's sine of 2x. So I have 2 times sine of 2x times cosine 2x. All right, now this one might be a little bit harder to see, but basically I have two sine theta, cosine theta, but in this case, my theta is 2x. So I have the double angle formula for sine of 2x, which means this is sine of 4x, and we're done. Okay. That one might be a little trickier for you guys to see. So marinate on it for a minute. Okay. Last one, example C. Cosine of 2y equals 1 minus tangent squared y over 1 plus tangent squared y. I'm going to start with the right-hand side. It looks like there's more going on. So it'll give me something to do. Um... So starting with the right-hand side, I have 1 minus tangent squared y over 1 plus tangent squared y. I'm going to rewrite tangent in terms of sines and cosines, okay? So this is going to be 1 minus sine squared y over cosine squared y over 1 plus sine squared y over cosine squared y. Okay, and then right now I have a complex fraction, right? I have a fraction within a fraction, so I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. So 
So I'm going to multiply everything by cosine squared y so I clear out those fractions. And then now we're going to distribute. So if I distribute cosine squared y across the numerator, I'm going to have cosine squared y minus, and then here it's going to cancel, so I just have sine squared y. And then if I distribute in the denominator, I'm going to have cosine squared y plus sine squared y. Ooh, do you notice something? Well, in the numerator, I have cosine squared y minus sine squared y. This is just cosine 2y. That's my double angle identity. And then what is this cosine squared y plus sine squared y? That's our most favorite Pythagorean identity. That equals 1. So we're left with cosine 2y over 1, which is cosine 2y. And that's where we want it to end up. That's the left-hand side. I think that one looked scarier than it actually was, right? All right, fabulous. Moving on to the last few examples, we're going to use identities to simplify each expression. Basically, we're going backwards. So these are um, the double angle identities, and then we have to rewrite what they were before it was applied. Okay? So here we have sine squared pi over 8 minus cosine squared pi over 8. Is this reminding you of one of the double angle identities? It's reminding me of cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, right? Except notice the order of subtractions reversed. So it's not exactly equal. So if I factor out a negative, then I can write it as cosine squared pi over 8 minus sine squared pi over 8, right? Remember, here, let's recall, a minus b is equal to negative b minus a. So anytime you want to reverse the order of subtraction, you multiply by a negative. So this is going to be negative cosine of 2 times, well, what was my theta? What was the angle? It's pi over 8. Actually, that looks weird. Let me not put the parentheses right there. 2 times that. Okay, so this is negative cosine. Well, 2 times pi over 8, that's pi over 4. Do we know what cosine of pi over 4 is? Yeah, it's rad 2 over 2. So this is going to be negative rad 2 over 2. And that's our final answer. Okay. Good. Next example, 1 minus 2 sine squared pi over 5. So this is the cosine double angle identity, right? This is cosine of 2 times pi over 5. So that's going to give us cosine of 2 pi over 5. Do I know 2 pi over 5? Is that one of our common angles on the unit circle? No, so we just leave it. Okay, don't assume. Um, if it's not asking you for a decimal or whatever, don't plug it in the calculator. If you don't know it, just leave it. All right, next one. Can you identify what this is? Well, it... Almost looks like the tangent double angle identity, but something's missing. Do you know what's missing? The 2 in the numerator. There's supposed to be a 2. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, this is basically 2 times tangent of 30 over 1 minus tangent squared 30 times a half, right? because then the twos would cancel out and give us what we have. And then now I can use the tangent double angle identity here. So I have one half times tangent of 60, right? Since it's tangent of, let's go back a step, it's tangent of 2 times 30. So this is 1 half times tangent of 60. So let's think. Tangent of 60, that's going to be sine of 60 divided by cosine of 60. So that's going to be rad 3 over 2 over a half. So this is 1 half times rad 3. So this is rad 3 over 2. 
All right, good. And then last one, two sine 13, cosine 13 degrees. Well, this is gonna be, let's see here, this is the double angle for sine of 13 degrees, right? So this is sine of two times 13 degrees. So this is sine of 26 degrees. Now that's not something that we know from the unit circle, so we just leave it, okay? And that concludes this section.